Welcome to Ms. Chow's Biology video lecture. Today we have the unit protein synthesis and we're going to start with the first part of it, transcription. The objective is that students will be able to understand the detailed steps to transcription and splicing. We'll start off with the idea as a quick review of the central dogma of DNA. In the central dogma of DNA, DNA is transcribed to RNA, and then later RNA is translated to protein. So here we have structure of DNA, molecular structure of DNA. When DNA gets transcribed to RNA, that process is called transcription. And then when RNA is translated to protein, it is called translation. And in this part, we're going to go over the first part of transcription. And when it gets to protein, this is the 3D structure of dehydrogenase enzyme from the bacteria Coelia cyclothalia. Transcription is defined as genetic information from a strand of DNA and is copied into mRNA. And translation is the process in which the code of the nucleic acids, which are also named bases, is changing to the code of proteins, which is also called amino acids. So a quick overview on the differences between DNA and RNA. In DNA, we is also stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. It's double stranded. They have base pairs of cytosine with guanine and adenine with thymine. They also carry the deoxyribose sugar group. In RNA, it's slightly different. Here in the RNA in this picture, we have uh, in the middle complementary DNA strands where the single strand on the side, labeled RNA strand right here, it shows that this is where the mRNA is being produced as it's transcribed. And RNA, when it's duplicated, it's also called ribose nucleic acid. It's a single strand, as you can tell, supported by the picture. The base pairs are different. You will have the same cytosine with guanine. Here, it's the same cytosine and guanine in DNA. However, they both have adenine. However, the thymine is no longer there anymore. It has changed to your cell. So for every thymine it reads as the RNA strand is duplicated, it will replace it with the uracil. So it has uracil instead of thymine. And then the sugar group is the ribose sugar group. There are three types of RNA. The first type is the mRNA and is the messenger RNA that carries the gene code in the form of RNA from DNA. Here it's like a single strand of RNA. Then we have tRNA. T stands for the transfer RNA. It is a protein that has anticodons at the end and grabs the corresponding protein and transfers it onto a growing protein sequence. So here it is a drawing the forefront. This is a tRNA. It also has the shape of a T here. And over here at the bottom part should be its anticodons which will mask with the codons and then on top it will connect the amino acids forming a protein sequence. Then we have rRNA. R standing for ribosomal RNA. The other name for this is the ribosome. It's where the mRNA is stationed and the protein is actually being made. So over here is a 3D structure of what a ribosomal RNA looks like. Yes, there are two components in which the mRNA can slide in between and actually clamps it together like a hamburger bun or a hot dog bun. Here and we're going to start talking about where transcription actually happens. This is where a segment of DNA is transcribed into mRNA. So here we have DNA. Um, it will unwind and separate, make the messenger RNA, 
go through a splicing process, come out of the nucleus, go into the cytoplasm here, and that's where translation happens. So transcription is basically you take a gene, your body needs a certain protein, most proteins genes are about between 2,000 to 3,000 base pairs long. So they take that part of the gene, they need a certain protein, for example, insulin. And the process of transcription, there are two kinds based on what kind of cells you have. In prokaryotes, uh, transcription occurs in the cytoplasm, and the product is mRNA. Then it will go into translation, where, and that seems pretty straightforward. Everything happens in the cytoplasm because prokaryotes do not have a nuclear membrane, as you can recall. Eukaryotes, however, does have a nuclear membrane. It has an extra step. The transcription occurs in a nucleus, and then the product is called pre-RNA. The reason it's called pre-mRNA is because it will go into a process called splicing that will finally produce the final product of mRNA. Once the mRNA is done, produced, it will come out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm in order for translation and the making of the protein. So there are three main steps, initiation, elongation, and termination. We'll talk about initiation, which means the beginning. RNA polymerase binds to the DNA at the promoter site first. So here you have an RNA polymerase will bind a specific area on that three to two to 3,000 base pair part of the gene, have a space for it to come. Then the DNA's double helix will start to unwind, giving room for transcription to occur. It will start its first complementary mRNA base pair on the RNA polymerase, since the RNA polymerase is actually going to be grabbing a, a basis from inside the nucleus and attaching it. The second step is called elongation. In elongation, the RNA polymerase will start moving from the 5' prime to 3' time prime direction. And 5' prime to 3' prime direction generally runs from right to left. As it reads the DNA sequence, it will obtain the corresponding complementary base and continue to make the mRNA longer. So here, as the RNA polymerase moves along, the light blue RNA single strand will continue along it for every base pair it reads is going to find a complementary RNA base pair and add it all the way until it reaches the stop sequence which is the third part termination the RNA polymerase terminates at the stop sequence in the gene RNA polymerase and mRNA will detach so once it will go to stop sequence they'll come apart so what are the next steps the mRNA will go in, in prokaryotes will go straight into translation since the transcription and translation in prokaryotes both happen in the cytoplasm there is no delay so here as a quick review you have a chromosome which has densely packed pieces of your genome then we take a part of it which will be your gene once it's transcribed to RNA and eukaryotes, you're going to have a pre-RNA where there are places where you have junk DNA that are going to be, are called introns, are being excised out. And so pre-RNA strand and eukaryotes will have to go through splicing. Here's an example of splicing in the nucleus before moving on. So here the protein, once it's spliced, it gets translated into foldable protein. And we'll cover that in the second video lecture of protein synthesis. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.